Welcome to today's edition of Cracking Cryptic. Um, now I can't remember if today's cryptic crossword is going to be one of the championship puzzles from a couple of months ago, because uh, so, I can't remember whether they've actually uh, gone through all of, all of them yet on Wednesdays when they've been tending to appear. So let's have a quick look. Um, I'll launch it now. And if it is a championship puzzle, I will have solved it before. Yes, it is. Um, so we've got a choice. I, I, guess, I guess what we might do is I might just go through this fairly slowly um, and uh, talk through some of the clues. I mean, all of the championship puzzles are, you know, more difficult than I think the average times cryptic. So don't worry if we're going through this and you think, oh my God, this is absolutely monstrous. Uh, it's intended to be monstrous. Um, Let's have a look. This puzzle was one of three in the grand final. Um, so, and not all of the contestants solved it correctly in the time. And that's all you need to know to know there's going to be something in this puzzle that's fairly brutally difficult. But without further ado, let's take a look at one down. I've gone to one down simply because I can see that it's two very short words. So it's probably so so um, or ha ha. But let's have a look. Average doubled in this manner. Um, well, I think it is, isn't it? If something's average, it's so-so. Um, and in this manner, is so. And if you double that, it would be so-so. So, a little bit difficult to immediately understand why the answer is so-so, but I think it is. Okay, so let's look at one across now, given we've got an S. Quick. School bells ringing, but heads absent. Uh, okay. So, here, half the trick is to work out what the definition is. And because we've got this phrase here, but heads absent, at the end of the clue, that sounds like a piece of instruction. That sounds like you've got to remove the head of a word, this first letter of a word. So we can conclude quite quickly that quick is going to be the definition. So we're looking for a word that means quick. Now school, short synonyms for school, well one is pod, um, as in a, a pod of fish. Um, but the, uh, there, is a, there is an abbreviation for school, which is, which is SCH. So now looking at this, some people may be able to write in the word that means quick um, but what we need is a word that means um, a bell ringing um, but without its without its first letter now have a think I encourage pausing the video when we do one of these um, slower run-throughs and the answer is going to be schnell so that's nell k-n-e-l-l -L, without without the first letter Let's have a look. Two down. Tittle tattle. Okay, I've already got an answer in my mind here. Um, from X grass, maybe, drawing in listeners. Okay. So quite a clever, um, quite a clever surface. Uh, and certainly given I can see what the answer is, I, I think it's a very, uh, very nice clue. Um, here we're looking for a word that means tittle tattle. Um, and again, if we scan the rest of the wordplay there, we need to try and identify, we need to try and find some instruction. And here, the, the words drawing in are instruction, uh, i.e. whatever's following the words drawing in will need to be inside a word which means X grass. So again, we need to be um, cycling through all our short synonyms for these things. Um, now, X grass, uh, there aren't many short synonyms for that. That's a, a cryptic allusion to something that uh, is to do with farming. Um, listeners, well, I think short synonym for the word listeners, we'd all come up with the same one. Um, and looking at the pattern of the clue, I mean, we can't really start ears here, can we? That's not going to work. So the ears is going to go here. And we're going to put hay around the outside for hearsay. So, not too difficult really. Once we understood how to pass the clue correctly, how to read it correctly, we could we could solve it fairly readily. 
Um, okay, three down. Order some sweet cider from the south. Okay, so here the word I clued in on or keyed in on immediately when I read the clue was some. Because we've talked before about how in almost every Times crossword there will be one hidden uh, answer, i.e. an answer that is actually contained consecutively within the letters of the clue. And the, the, the setter needs to indicate that somehow um, to the solver. And one of the words that's most common when the set is doing that is the word sum. I mean, we might see words like in part or found within or, you know, that sort of thing. Here we've got a down clue. So the set is using from the south to indicate that the words can be found reversed within uh, sweet cider. And if you look in there, start with an E, you'll find edict, which is an order. So, four down. One letting desperate Dan daily, or dally. Let's get my glasses checked. One letting desperate Dan a dally. Okay, so here I suppose the most classic form of cryptic glue is the anagram. We should always be looking out for it. What indicates an anagram? Well, it's going to be a word that that tells you, that indicates some sort of destruction, some sort of despair, some sort of misery being inflicted on the poor letters that are being anagrammed. So here, the set has done a very clever thing because he's used a natural phrase, i.e. desperate Dan, where desperate is in fact being used as the anagram indicator. So we need to anagram the words Dan and Dally to come up with uh, a word which means one letting and somebody who lets is, pause again if you need to, a landlady, which is an anagram of Dan Daly, obviously. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Again, you know, before you even look at the clue, always be, you know, get into the practice of looking at the letters you have and thinking, do I know any words that fit there? Now, I, I can think of one word immediately that, you know, station is what I'm thinking, but let's, let's have a look. Abstract artist kept one in shop. Hmm. Abstract artist kept one in shop. Well, I can see how one in a shop, keeping one in shop. Shop could be a stationer. I'm not seeing the rest of it. Ah, no, I do see now. It's a very clever clue, actually. Um, so the answer is stationer. Um, and here we have a partial anagram. Um, so abstract here is being used as the anagram indicator. It's saying, uh, which is, you know, that's slightly unusual, but I think it's, it's fair enough. We need to anagram the word artist, and then we need to put one inside. Well, one we've seen before is either, very commonly, either the letter A or the letter I. But here, it's actually the whole word. It's the whole one in the middle. An anagram of artist. Oops, my cursor is going all over the place. There we go, a stationer. Right, it may enable reception venue to accommodate a famous Swiss beauty. Um, now, the set is a bit unlucky with this clue, actually, because um, of where the line break occurs. So when I read this, I read it as it may enable reception. And then I sort of put a mental um, strike through of the clue and assumed the, ne the rest of it would be wordplay, whereas I'm sure the setter wanted us to read it as it may enable reception venue to accommodate a famous Swiss, Swiss beauty. But if you, if you read it the way that the line break suggests you should read it, i.e. it may, may enable reception, you can probably write in the answer without needing to understand the rest of it. Um, so, how's it working? Well, a, f a famous Swiss beauty. Obviously, it's very unlikely to be... There's very few synonyms I can think of for famous Swiss beauties. So, we need to split this up somehow. A famous Swiss, perhaps. There is a famous 
Swiss person who often appears in crosswords um, because uh, the letters of his name are very useful to setters, and that's William Tell. So that's interesting looking at what we have here. So if we put that in, okay, so now we need venue to accommodate a famous Swiss, Swiss beauty. Well, we could put site around the outside of a tell and get satellite, and then a beauty is a dish, and there's the answer. So the instruction or the tip for that clue is to, to be able to read it properly. And as I say, I think the setter was a bit unlucky there because the line break helped us to read it properly. Can defender holder can can defending holder of the ashes retire? Well, this is a sad clue for an Englishman today. Um, can defending holder of ashes retire? Okay. So here again, the way to um, to get into this clue, I think, is to look for some sort of instruction within it. Um, now there there are two words, I guess, one, which one could key in here. One word is retire, which could indicate a reversal, perhaps. Um, but the ashes, well, or a holder of the ashes, retire. You know that would strike me. The only word I can think of for holders of ashes are urns. You know, urns are short synonyms for that, and they're very useful in a crossword. But reversing the letters of urn, that's not going to give you anything useful. Um, but if we look at the word defending, and we can see how, you know, if you if a word defends another, it might be surrounding it. You know, it might be uh, protecting it. Um, and that would enable a much better reading because then we're looking for a short synonym for can. Well, there's one very obvious one I can think of immediately. A holder of the ashes, well, that could be an urn. And the whole thing might mean retire. So pause if you need to, but I'm sure most of you have got turn in to retire in the sense of going to bed. So bear with what speaker holds as representative. Bear with what speaker holds as representative. Um, hmm. I'm not sure I know what that is yet, so let's come back to that. Fairly horrible smell mostly, trailing behind stinker say. Fairly horrible smell. Stinker, say. Mm, no, I don't know that one either. Slightly annoying, given I only solved this crossword three weeks ago. Um, okay, so here we go. Sitcoms beginning with Nora Batty giving offence. So again, we saw it with Desperate Dan. We've seen it again with Nora Batty. The setter seems to have a penchant for um, taking these uh, famous characters um, and using their real names in as sort of cryptic clues. So we saw Desperate Dan being an anagram indicator, and here we've got Nora Batty being, uh, Batty here is an anagram in an indicator for the word Nora. And sitcoms beginning, well, I think we can all guess that that might be hinting at the letter S. So we've got an S and N-O-R-A being anagrammed, to give us a word meaning an offence. So, have a think, but R seems quite obvious there. Let's try seven down, see if we can get some letters in that five cross. Puzzle from the setter's pen provided within. Okay, well, again, here it's just an exercise in reading the clue, and because I've got a bit of experience with these puzzles. The word, the word I clue, keyed in on again when I read this clue was will perhaps surprise some of you. So the word I keyed in on was the word provided. And the reason I looked at that word is that provided has a very, very useful, very short synonym, which is the word if. So when I see a clue with the word provided in it, I automatically I'm thinking if. And now let's look at what we have here. We've got blank blank s blank i. Well, if I use 
the if there. And now let's read the clue again. Puzzle. From the setter's pen provided within. So I now need a word that means puzzle, I think fairly clearly, because I put my if within something else, which is going to turn out to be a word for the setter. So that's probably going to be, the, or the setters in the possessive. So it's going to be my, perhaps. A pen, well that could be a few things, but one short synonym is a sty, in the pig sty. And there we get mystify. So not very, uh, you know, that's a writing clue. You know, a clue that would take an experienced solver probably two seconds, but an inexperienced solver could take all week over it. It's just uh, practice that enables you to get a handle on, you know, the, the hint that you need to be able to write the answer in. Okay. So here we've got study chapter one on class resembling scallops. Okay, well this is a difficult word, but a very simple word play that leads to it. And the word, again, that I keyed in on when I read this clue was the word study, because study has two short synonyms that are often used in crosswords. There's the word den, as in, you know, a man, man's den, or a man cave, I guess. Um, so that's one possibility. But the other word that is more common is the old word con, which does mean to study or to read. Um, and because con is used in so many other words, uh, you know, study, I think, would probably be 75% used to indicate the word con when you see it in a crossword clue. And den will be the other 25% of the time. So here we've got study, which I strongly suspect will be part of wordplay. Chapter, well, chapter does have an abbreviation, and that's CH. One on class resembling scallops. Well, here I'm, I'm thinking we need a word which means resembling scallops. And I'm not too sure I know the word, but I can see how one can be I and class can be form. And I guess this looks like it could be a word. If something's conchiform, I'm quite sure it, you know, if we look it up in the dictionary, we'll find it means resembling a scallop in some way. Um, Okay, so now I now I can get this not not through looking at the clue again, but because I can think of a word that I can think of two words that fits. One of which does mean um, representative. Um, so, okay, so how do we break this down? Well, what we're looking for here is a word which means um, uh, representative. Um, and then we need a short synonym for a word which means bear or bear with. Um, and then we need a short word for what the speaker holds. Now you might be able to get that looking at the end here. So a speaker holds a mic. And now we just can't need to come up with a word that means bear. And the word they're looking for here is tote. And so if something is totemic, it's representative. Um, okay, so I don't want the video to be too long today, so I'm going to, I'll do a couple more and then leave the rest as an exercise for the view over this. So let's try and get 12 down, just because I think that will be very helpful. Um, wanting an actor, magic in plays, showing dramatic range. Okay, wow. Wow, it's a very um, very clever surface here, but difficult to pass. Um, so, how can I explain how I solved this? Well, the way I did it was I looked, when I'm looking at the words an actor magic in this clue, they don't look natural to me for some reason. I'm not sure I can explain it but it just doesn't look like a natural expression. And therefore, I think that the setter has put these into the clue because he needs these exact letters somehow, so which tends to indicate one of two things. 
one. It could be one of these hidden word clues. Well, we've already had one of those in the crossword, so there won't be another one. Or, or it could be an anagram somehow. So here I'm thinking somehow I need to use the words act and magic and possibly some of the words around them to create 10 letters which I'm going to anagram and the whole thing will give me a dramatic range probably. So now we have to read it very carefully to find out what, what letters we need to anagram. So wanting an actor magic in plays. So the way I think this is supposed to be read is it's saying if you were to take the an out of the letters that make up actor magic in, you would be left with 10 letters. Uh, and plays there is the anagram indicator. You know, it's saying these letters are going to play around. Um, then you would have the 10 letters that you need to anagram. And I think if you do that, you can come up with the word tragicomic which is a dramatic range. So that's how to read that one. Uh, let me just have a quick look, see if there's anything else that... we should talk about. No, I think, I think the rest of it's doable. Um, this is certainly very doable. This is the name of a painter. I'll, I'll just scan through and tell you the definitions so you can think about the word plays. Um, this, wow, that's that's the name of a footballer. This means cleaned out. Um, this is the whole thing is a cryptic definition. So the answer to this clue, when you read it, uh, can be read as an answer to this. As a, if you read it as a sort of riddle, the whole thing means the, it means the answer. Uh, this means be impatient. Um, oh, right. Okay. This is the name of country. This means astonished. I think this will be the name, a member of a flock, name of a sheep. Buzz around there regularly going back for honey. Uh, I think this will mean honey, but I haven't actually just solved that, but just looking at the way that clue works, I think that's what that will mean. Um, a brief sort of a piece. Oh. Yeah, this means of a piece, really. Um, so if something is of a piece, it's like something else. It's the answer to it. Um, okay. sec. Um, uh, uh. <laughs> That's a very funny clue. Um, and the answer is an item that you wear. Um, but the rest of the clue I don't think is sort of hinting at the type of um, type of outfit that is involved in the answer. I haven't got that one yet, but I think once you get the letters. Um, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it will be a writing. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, and um, yeah, we'll see you again tomorrow for a, uh, an edition of Cracking the Cryptic where we haven't seen the puzzle before. So thanks for watching.